So it's an equality which involves two complex numbers, ZW, which involves two complex numbers, Z and W, and then which looks like this. The reason for the name, G tri uh, triangle inequality, is of course the geometrical representation of this inequality, because if this is my, if, if on this diagram this is my, oops, this is my number Z and this is my number W, on this diagram, we know when we add these two numbers together, this will be the z plus w number. It's a simple parallelogram rule on vectors. Now, if you, if I put the lengths, this, if I put these absolute values on this diagram, then the absolute value of z is, of course, the length of this vector. Absolute value of w is the length of this vector. And the absolute value of z plus w is the length of this vector. And from this diagram, you can see why this inequality is called triangle inequality. Because if you look at the triangle, which is, goes from this point O to the tip of the vector W and to the tip of the vector Z plus W, that's a triangle. The sides of this triangle, they are of length W. This side, which is a dashed line, it's a length absolute value of Z. And this inequality tells you that the length of the red side of this triangle does not exceed this combined length of the two other sides of the triangle. That's the inequality you probably heard of in the context of the pure geomet geometry with no vectors or something, just where the triangle was just, just a triangle. Side of the length of the side of a triangle never exceeds the combined length of the other two sides. That's the reason we call this triangle inequality, although when you look at it without the diagram, if you just close the diagram, nothing really suggests geometry in that inequality. Well, what's, be what's, what's beautiful about the complex numbers, with the complex numbers, you can provide easy, nice, algebraic proof for that inequality without saying it's obvious at all. And that's, again, that's another advantage of, advantage of the complex numbers in algebraic approach we studied together. It's very simple proof, and I wanted to see it because I think a few problems might involve the elements of that proof, and that's a short one. You start with your left hand side, but you go square, because it's always easier to manipulate with the square of the absolute value. And then we use this uh, identity, which says that the absolute value of a complex number, it's a product of the number times its conjugate. Here it is, complex number times its complex conjugate. Yes. Now, at the next step, well, we will do a very natural step, the one which any of you would do at this stage, which is expand this product. Let's just expand this product. That's the expansion. I'll do it like this, uh, z times z bar, then we'll go w times w bar, and then goes this combined mixed products, which are z times w bar, and z bar times w. That's a simple expansion. Now, when you look at this, when you look at this, you can identify here the square of the absolute value again. Now, individual z, individual w, no longer combined. So this, this is the identification. That's the two terms which correspond to this one and correspond to this one. Now, for these two, we have to do something about it. Uh, at first, I just observe for you that, in fact, if you look closely at these two terms, at this one and at this one, you will realize that the second one is the complex conjugate of the first one. See that? And when we add the complex number with its complex conjugate, the result will be two real parts. I'll, I'll show it earlier. Two real parts, and here is these two real parts. Right. That's the result of our algebraic manipulations with this expression. Now, we're going to look closely at this last term. We're going to look closely at this last term, and uh, I will do it separately. I will, I will do it here. I, I just I do, I've made some notes here. Uh, let's just look at this last term, uh, like so. Uh, I'll give my z number. I'll give my z number real and imaginary components. I mean, I name them. So here we go. If my z number is like so, in fact, this z number in this, in this little argument down here in this angle has nothing to do with this z number. Just it, it goes for any z number. So if I have Cartesian form of my z number like this, we all know that in this case the length of that z number or the absolute value of this z number will be just a Pythagoras expression, some of the squares. Uh, actually, it's here. I just I have this a. 
I don't have B here, but it doesn't matter. Now, what I ask you to realize now is this. Some of the squares, A is a real number, B is a real number, right? Some of the squares is a positive expression. In fact, some of the squares bigger than each of the squares individually. Do you agree with that? And that, uh, if I formalize this in terms of the A and Z, it will be looking something like this. Absolute value of A is less than absolute value of Z. Everybody agrees with that? It's a nice observation. Real part of a complex number always less than the length of that complex number. The same goes about the imaginary part, in fact. Imaginary part of the complex number always less the, than the length of that in absolute value, less than the length of that complex number. Well, then look at this now. Mm, I'll just bring it up a little bit. Look at this now. If I look now at the real part of z times w bar, now we're back to this context, back to this context, I may think about this product as just single complex number. And we just discovered with you that the real part of a complex number, this product, doesn't exceed the absolute value of that complex number, right? Doesn't exceed this. We just discovered this with you. And we also know that when you have an absolute value of the product, you can split this, right, into the absolute value, into the absolute value of numbers individually. And I dropped the bar over, the, over, over W because absolute value of the complex number equal to the absolute value of its complex conjugate. And we just see, look at this, that the real, num uh, real part of the product of two complex numbers, conjugate doesn't play much of a role here, doesn't exceed length of Z times length of W. Yes, please. Complex number, the name of that inequality, if I find it here, here it is. It's called Cauchy. Schwartz inequality. Well, now I can say here's, here, here's my, well, that's the obvious inequality, right? The real number of any kind, never, always less than absolute value of that real number. Now, for this one, I can apply this Cauchy Schwartz inequality. And if I do that, here I will have something like this. Now, if you combine everything together, if you combine these two terms, if you combine this one, if you combine this, all of them together, you will have. That's the first two terms here. This is a result of Cauchy-Schwartz inequality application. And then this looks like this looks like a perfect square, square of A, square of B, double product of A and B. If you combine this square together, you finish your triangle inequality. Look what we started with. We started with the square of the left-hand side, and we ended up with the square of the right hand side. And that finishes the triangle inequality. 